Hi, this is not a very good hunting channel. Today we're going to look at the beaver tail final attack layout boat. Uh, I just picked it up, still in the back of my truck, so we'll get it unpacked and uh, see what it's all about. Stay tuned. <laughs> So here it is. It is the final attack. It's a layout boat for duck hunting. Uh, I'll be using it for fishing too, but it's about eight feet long, uh, 80 some pounds. But uh, yeah, I saw it online. Saw so lots of uh, good videos about it, but uh, I wanted to make a video just showing uh, a little bit more up close uh, view of it, just in case anyone else is looking at uh, maybe picking one up for their uh, upcoming duck season. Alright, let's get this off the truck and uh, opened up and see what we got. just do a, uh, a walk around really because I know the videos that are on, on YouTube out there now they don't really show you the boat all that much they show it in the water and being used but you don't really see so those are wheels so I think they're hollow they sound hollow Pretty good sized wheels. Okay, so the transom part looks like it's hollow as well, and they just molded in these um, tubes to give it some strength if you can clamp your motor onto it. 
There's a spud hole for the winter. That is the pin for the backrest, I believe. You can see inside. It has foam in the back. And in the front. Um, it is a very hot day outside, so this is a uh, kind of warping in the sun but it's flexible stuff There's the ridges I'm gonna flip it over uh, upside down so you can get a look at the underneath and see what the uh, the hull looks like So that wasn't very hard to uh, flip over, uh, as hard as I made it look, but here's the hull, just flat bottom with uh, some ridges here for a little bit of strength, I guess. But yeah, the uh, the floor of it is very, very flexible. Uh, so what some people have said is uh, they put some plywood, some thin plywood in the, the floor to stiffen it up. Uh, I might end up doing that, but I'm not sure. I might end up just putting down the I have a, a water, sorry, a, uh, a rubber floor mat that I'll put down, see if that's enough. But here's a good look at the wheels. It doesn't look like they're pinned in. I think they're just press fit. So they, you know, if you could pry this part and this part out just a bit, That'll pop right out. That's pretty neat. So I guess it's might be fairly easy to take them off if you don't want them on there. Because I don't I don't see any pins going through. At least in this one. This one's a tighter fit, so I can't see, but it's probably the same. Anyway, that's the uh, the underneath. Let's flip it around and uh, break out the uh, accessories that came with it. So, this is the, uh, the cover that you can get with it. Um, for like the uh, blind part uh, also it also has um, the arms to go into it uh, for the doors when you're popping out of it and as well there's the backrest so open those up and uh, see if I can get some of it attached so I took out the uh, seat, and uh, it comes with these pins, uh, and that's to hold it in. There it is sitting there. It has a plastic uh, pin coming out of there, and it lines up with this hole. And then from there, you need to drill a hole here and a hole here to slide these pins through 
so that it holds in, flight, in place from falling out. And I saw in another video of that um, that this can slide around on you, so it's a good idea to get those pins installed. So okay, so I went and I got the floor mat. It's just a uh, plastic, well, rubber floor mat you pick up at the hardware store or wherever. Um, but it's just to keep you off the uh, the plastic of the actual boat. That way when you're in the cold water and stuff, at least it's a little bit of an insulator. Um, I forget how big this piece was, but... Um, it's only one panel. They come in different um, size panels, but uh, you can snap them together. I only need one panel. Okay, that's probably better. So I have it where my butt is just a little bit away from the, um, the actual seat. My head is up close here. Um, as you can see, my feet are tucked in here. Um, there's lots of room, but I can't really get my feet up. So I don't know if that's going to be uncomfortable or what, but luckily uh, I'm 5'10", so I have enough room if I wanted to to put my legs up, or my feet up like this, with my knees bent, and that's not too bad actually sitting like this either, just having my feet up like that, but you just have to turn your boots and go like that, that's actually not too bad, there's still lots of room in here, I don't know if you can see that. stuff from where my leg is so yeah so it's about a foot on each side at least to be able to put things in and then down here if you want to put something in, in behind you behind the seat there's lots of room actually let me see Yeah, there's lots of room on the seat. <laughs> All right, let's uh, see what we can do about the blind. Okay, so this is the blind that comes with it and the doors. Um, you can see there's already spots where you can install those hinges for the pop-open doors, so that's pretty easy to follow along. Um, let's get this put together and uh, see if we can get it on there. Okay, well, um, I unpacked the uh, blind cover and there was no instructions. Um, so, I had to flip it around a couple times to make sure that it was fitting right. So I have that on. Um, seems to me like the the wider of the two flaps goes in the back. At least that's what it seems like to me. It fits better like that. Um, I could be wrong. But that seems like it's a wider piece of the front to cover the front of the boat, which is wider than the back of the boat. And when I mean wider, I mean wider that way. Um, also, on this flap here, it has a, 
adhesive strip with some Velcro. So I'm guessing it's to uh, hold it down to the front so it doesn't blow around. Uh, this side has Velcro, but no piece of, uh, sorry, this is like the felt side or the loop. And the other part with the hooks, there's nothing on that. So I would assume there should be another piece that if you wanted to, you could hook it down or use it somehow. I mean, I'm not going to be really using it because I have a, a motor going on in the back. But I'm wondering well, why that piece didn't have one. But yeah, again, uh, no instructions in with it. But it's pretty self-explanatory to attach these um, these bars together. Um, I did see some self-tapping screws in there, but I don't know if you're supposed to screw put a screw in here to keep it from twisting. So what I'm going to do is use all the screws that come with it until I get to that point. And if I have uh, any self-tapping screws left over, I'll assume it's to uh, screw into there so that that doesn't twist. But uh, yeah, we'll keep going and see how it works out. Okay, so I just did a quick inventory. And uh, yeah, so these bolts here are to be used to install the hinges and then those are extra hinge uh, pieces that can go into the ends of, of the bars like that and then there are two self tapping screws and I can only assume that it's to hold these from twisting uh, so I'm gonna go with that. So I got the uh, door brackets installed. Um, I did have my drill, so I was able to drill a small pilot hole into here and the second one. Um, so because this didn't come with any instructions, I noticed that it has two two different size screws. There's a fatter screw on the right there and a smaller screw on the left um, there was four of each uh, same diameter of uh, thread and in um, nut that goes on the back but uh, the heads were different sizes so there's a nut in the back here two nuts and the machine screws there. Um, Phillips heads. This is just a Phillips machine screw that threads into the plastic here. So um, make sure that uh, these are pointing out when you install them. And the self tapping screw goes in here so it doesn't twist. So when you install it, you'll see that. Um, they overlap just a bit and I wasn't sure if that's the way it's supposed to be but uh, if you look on the picture you can see that there's overlaps as well so I'm sure it's just uh, dependent on how straight you mount those in relation to each other to uh, have an angle or not when you overlap it but I'll show you with the cover on the other side what it looks like with it overlapped. And the cover isn't very hard to put on. Uh, I don't know if I can get it with one hand. I might be able to. So it slides over the door like that. Down here. This part will slide over and down on that earth. 
So, yeah, not too bad, even with one hand. And then I'll have the, uh, the 2.5 on the back of this. So I won't really be using that. Now they said that this tends to drag and cover uh, the wheels and it kind of acts like a parachute when you're in the water because it sits fairly low in the water. Um, so I'll have to see what kind of maybe just a zip tie above the wheel keep it um, out of the water a little bit more, but I don't plan on going too far with this thing in the water, so even if it drags, not the end of the world. It's not like I'm having to paddle it. So there it is. That's the, uh, the final attack from Beaver Tail. And uh, we'll have some videos down the road of it in use. So there's a bit of a gap when I have a seat on. I guess it's not the end of the world. I'm going to be wearing waders anyway, so... It's not like I'm going to be uh, using it as a uh, shelter from a storm or anything. But yeah, so that's it. I'll uh, get to work on making a uh, bench seat so that I can be uh, sitting up a little bit higher when I'm using the tiller uh, motor. Alright, well. that's it for this one. Hopefully uh, I get to get some good use out of it this year. Duck season is approaching so better get on her. Hope you found that interesting and uh, hope you're enjoying your time outside.